Now let's take a look at problem number 53. In problem 53, we're asked to determine the intervals on which the function f of x is equal to 1 plus sine x over cosine of x is continuous. And then we want to find two specific limits. We want the limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the left of f of x, and we want the limit as x goes to pi over 4 pi over 3 of f of x. Okay. Uh, so first of all, we want to determine the intervals on which this function is continuous. And now, uh, remember, if we're trying to figure out intervals on which a certain function is continuous, then it's a good question to ask, well, what would make it not continuous? Sine and cosine are both nice enough functions. They are uh, continuous everywhere. But we could get division by zero and division by zero would be a problem in this case. So the first question we should ask is, well, where is cosine zero? And the first place that I think of is, well, cosine is zero at pi over two, right? So let's write it pi over two up here. And where's the second place, if we're going around the unit circle, the second place that cosine is zero? Uh, let's see, that's straight down, right? And straight down is 3 pi over 2. So in between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, everything is just fine. Although there is a discontinuity at pi over 2, and there is a discontinuity at 3 pi over 2. But wait, we could move on from there. 3 pi over 2 is no good, but then we're okay again until we get to 5 pi over 2. And then we're okay again until we get to 7 pi over 2. So at all of these, um, like 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, all of those are bad, but everything else is good. So how do we write this in a concise way? So I would do something like this, that we could say, okay, um, an odd number. Well, what's an odd number? Uh, maybe like 2k plus 1. Notice that this is an odd number if k is an integer. Uh, times pi over 2. So some odd number times pi over 2 up to the next odd number. But the next odd number over 2k plus 1 over 2 would be 2 times k plus 1 plus 1 um, pi over 2. So notice what happens here if k is 0. If k is 0, I get 1 pi over 2. And if k is 0, I get 3 pi over 2, exactly this interval. But any k that I put in for any integer, uh, would actually give me another interval on which this thing is continuous. And so it's discontinuous at all of these points, like 2k plus 1 pi over 2 for any k that is an integer. So where k is an integer. Okay, so here's a nice way of writing all of the intervals on which this thing is continuous. Now we want to find these two limits. And so the first limit we want to look at is what's the limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the left of this function f of x. So I guess the first question we should answer before we even look at this question is, so what's going on at pi over 2? We said it was bad because the bottom is 0. But cosine of something is making the bottom bad. Is there a cosine of x on top to cancel out that cosine of x on the bottom? No, there's not. And there's not some nice way to factor 1 plus sine of x to make a cosine of x show up. So what I know is that means that cosine of x is producing a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. And if this is a vertical asymptote, then that means that the function is either shooting up or shooting down towards that vertical asymptote as I approach pi over 2 from the left-hand side. Now remember, approaching from the left-hand side 
says, take a number just a little bit smaller than pi over 2. If I take a number just a little bit smaller than pi over 2, then what is happening to the top? Well, 1 plus what sine of something pretty close to pi over 2? Well, it's pretty close to 1. So we get something like 1 plus something very close to 1. So that's certainly a positive number. And then what I do is I say, OK, what if I take a number that's close to pi over 2 but just smaller and plug it in for cosine? Well, if you're just under pi over 2, well, cosine is positive in the first quadrant, and you must be sitting in the first quadrant if you're just smaller than pi over 2. So that means that cosine is also positive. So the top is positive, and the bottom is positive, and I know that I'm either going to positive infinity or negative infinity, so which one must it be? It must be positive infinity, and so I can say that this limit is infinity. Now, this type of a problem is almost impossible if you haven't memorized the values on your unit circle. So if you haven't memorized the values on the unit circle and understand your unit circle, go back, learn the values on the unit circle, then try these problems, and I guarantee you life will be so much clearer. Okay, so last piece of this problem is we want to look at the limit as x goes to 4 pi over 3 of our function f of x. Well, is 4 pi over 3 one of the problems? The answer is, uh, no, it's not. It's not a problem at all. Uh, it doesn't make the bottom 0 if I plug in 4 pi over 3. And since it doesn't make the bottom 0, I can just go ahead and plug in 4 pi over 3 and get my answer straight out of the function. So the answer is going to be, well, on top, I get 1 plus sine of 4 pi over 3. So sine of 4 pi over 3 is going to be what? Um, negative root 3 over 2? And on the bottom, I get cosine of 4 pi over 3. And cosine of 4 pi over 3, let's see, that would be negative 1 half. And then I could simplify this down a little bit. Let's see what we can do with it. So I could write this as a 2 over 2. So I get 2 over 2 minus square root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 over 2. In other words, this is 2 minus root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. The 2's cancel, and I'm left with 2 minus root 3. So the limit as x goes to 4 pi over 3 is just 2 minus root 3 because by plugging in the 4 pi over 3, I'm not really causing any division by 0, so I can just plug it in.